Today we're going to talk on a topic that's important. As you can see, is entitled Brain Health. Brain Health, the basics. All right. I first want to begin by talking about aging and health. Aging and health. Aging well depends on three things. The first thing is the genes, hereditary. I look at my grandfather, you all know him well. And I see him over there sitting every day. I remember back when I was younger, I would, I would spend a lot of time with him at his home. And they didn't have a car, and so he would ride his bike to the grocery store. I said, Glad to say, hey, uh, let's, let's go to the store. I said, I don't have the car yet. Let, let me wait to get the car. He said, no, we're going to go. Grandma needs a few things. I said, sure, let's go. So he takes out his bike. He gives me another bike. And we go, up, we got to go up a hill. And he's riding his bike hard up the hill. And I'm behind him, struggling to go up the hill. I have to get off the bike and walk the bike up the hill to catch up with him. Then we go to the store. He, does, he gets a full basket of, of, um, of groceries. I'm like, how are we, we don't have a car. How are we going to bring this home? He said, you'll see. You know, on his bike, he has a basket. On the back of the, the, back of the bike, he has some basket. But also what he did was he put the bags on the handles. And then he gave me the bags to put on my handles, too. We were riding the bike all this way. He was going normal. He didn't even slow down. And I was like, man, I praise God that I have the genes. <laughs> all right? So number two is the environment. And there's many things I can say about environment, but I want to talk about social isolation. Social isolation makes a big difference. No, we're all social beings. We love to communicate, we like to talk to others. So we're, if we're isolated, it does something to the mind. And lastly, lifestyle choices. Lifestyle choices is what we're gonna focus on today. Decisions we consciously make either for the better or for the worse. So again, we're going to continue with aging and health. Even if you are healthy, changes in memory and learning as you, get, as you age may include more challenges with multitasking. Oh, do we, could you raise your hand and think if you're a good multitasker? Multitasker. I was listening to a study recently about multitasking, and it says that we put more energy People who multitask put more energy into that. And I, what that means is, let's say you're, you're not supposed to drive and text. But let's say you are driving and texting. We're not supposed to, but I know some people do. You have to, you have to think on the text. You have to find all the letters to, at the right time before you look up again. When you look up, you have to make sure everything's right. And then look back down. Look back. It's putting so much more energy into multitasking. That's just an example. But please don't multitask in regards to texting and driving. All right, number two is increased, increased difficulty in finding words. Sometimes we want to express ourselves, and we find that the older we get, it's the, hard, the words are harder to come to mind. And lastly, minor decrease in the ability to pay attention. And again, I want to bring out, this is why prevention is better than cure. Cure is giving you a better quality of life. Prevention is keeping you from going through the situation that someone else may have been cured from. So I'd like to say protecting your health is important to maintaining your independence. If possible, it's nice to have your independence. Even Grandpa, I remember, yeah, still, he had his independence. He would ride his bike, run late. He, every, anywhere he wanted to go, if he could go, he would go, right? However, at any age, you can still improve your skills and learn new things. So we're talking about, tonight we're talking about protecting brain health 
Good overall health may help to maintain good brain health. Okay. So in the book of Psalms, chapter 100, verse 3, it's right there. But it says, Know ye that the Lord God, it is he that hath made us. It is who? It is he, God, who hath made us, and not ourselves. Keep that in mind. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Again, as Psalm 100, verse 3. You see, God knows us. <clears throat> God knows us better than we know ourselves. All the studying we do is just the tip of the iceberg. Therefore, if we want to know something about the body, we must go to him in prayer. He is the great physician, as, we sing, as we're singing, the gentle healer. My next scripture I want to bring out is from Psalms chapter 139, verse 14. The Bible says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. Here David is saying that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. It's, it's so interesting when you study the body, anatomy and physiology. You can see all the intricates. Connect, this connects to that, that connects to this. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. It wasn't a random thing that took place. Friends, he didn't speak us to ex into existence like he did the previous days. Rather, he got down on his hands and knees and took time to mold us and shape us with his hands. We are indeed our creator's masterpiece. Now, what is a masterpiece? Anyone, what is a masterpiece? The crowning work. It says here, the great work of a person's career or a work of understanding, a work of outstanding creativity, skill, profanity, and workmanship. I'm a masterpiece. You're a masterpiece. We all are masterpieces. There is no such thing as ugly when it comes to God's creation. Amen? <laughs> One of my favorite cars is a Mercedes G55 AMG, all right? And so my, my thing is, when you buy a car, what do you usually find in the glove department? Anyone? He said the manual? The owner's manual. You're right, an owner's manual. And what kind of information do you find in an owner's manual? I hear, I'm hearing a lot of things. Say, what was it? How to care for the car? Maintenance? All right. Do you think that we have an owner's manual? Yeah? You sure? Who said yes? Okay. You sure about that? Okay. Here we go. The Bible is our owner's manual. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3.16, it talks, it, it talks about instruction in righteousness. The Bible also says in 1 Corinthians 6.19 and 20 that we are not our own, but rather we are paid with a price. And so if we want to know how our, the body works, what we should do, what we should not do, we must go to the owner's manual. And I'm going to refer to this as we continue in this presentation, which is the Bible. And I want to bring out this point. As my wife said it yesterday, there's eight points. There's eight laws of health that, we follow, that the Bible brings out, and I want, that gives us optimum health. And I'm going to write these down as we go. All right? So if you, I hope you brought your, your note and pencil to take some notes. Okay. So the acronym is a little different from yesterday, but it's the same principles. It's called God's plan. And in God's plan, there's eight letters symbolizing eight different health laws. And we're gonna go through each of them to show how we can improve our brain health, how that we can not only regain it, but to maintain it by God's grace. It's small there, but I'm gonna, you'll see it coming up soon. 
So the first one I want to bring out is called is, is a G representing godly trust. Can you see that color? Is it good? No? Okay. All right, green is my favorite color. I tried green, but we're going to do black. <laughs> okay, that's better? All right. All right, godly trust. It simply means to trust in God. Trust in the person who made you. Trust in the person who knows you better than you know yourself. Trust in him that knows everything you're going through, for he is touched with the feelings of your infirmities. When we know that God knows what we're going through, it makes it easier to go through that particular situation. This is why the Bible, or our manual, states in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. I want to, to read that for you. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. I didn't put it up there, but I want you to use your Bible. Proverbs 3, verse 5. I'll read it to you. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. It's, what's the first word? Trust. We have to trust. Not just anyone, but trust God. It never fails. Next, I want to read Psalm 116, verse 7. The previous book before. 116, verse 7. It reads, and you're hearing, I'll read it. It says, return unto thy rest. Return where? O my soul, for the Lord hath dwelt bountifully, dealt what? With thee. Keep that in mind. Although God has opened doors for you, provided for you, protected you, we tend to forget all that and focus more so on the problem we are currently in. We even forget his promises. If we would really remember his promises, we wouldn't have to worry so much. Rather, we wouldn't have to worry at all. When we are worrying, we are not at rest. I think of someone worrying, they're just, oh, I'm sure you see people, oh, gosh, I, guess I gotta do this, I gotta do this, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And they may not do that physically, but you may see them, they do it in their mind. And that's exhausting to be worrying and thinking and ruminating on these negative things. We must return to our rest, our rest in Jesus. And if you don't know him, guess what? He wants to know you. He wants to know you. He wants to know you. Won't you let him in? There's perfect rest. There's perfect peace in Jesus. The manual states, the owner's manual states in John 14, 27. I'm going to read that to you as well. I'm hearing that. I hear someone saying it. John 14, verse 27, it reads, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, if we have peace in Jesus, even if the house burns down, we still have peace in Jesus. Even when we lose all our money, we still have peace in Jesus, right? So friends, the person to trust the person to turn to is Jesus. I want to bring up this principle. So if we worry, it turns into unrelenting or chronic stress. Then from there, it goes to anxiety. Then it goes on to neurological problems. We need to break, we need to break some stress. Not, at, not an even flow of it. So if we have a constant stress, it's, it's tiring. But if stress comes and goes, then it's okay. 
Stress will never be eliminated. Rather, the focus will change. That's the, that's the goal in Godly Trust. The stress might be, still be there, but the, the mindset changes to something else even better. Does that make sense? Good. This is Godly Trust. All right. So wants to, so let's go back real quick. So from, a, from stress, from anxiety to neurological problems, I'm gonna to talk to you about how that happened, the transition from this anxiety to the problems with the mind. So let's do that. So it says, once the brain has encountered a threat, whether it's actual or preserved, whether it's actual or perceived, that's very important because sometimes we can think something is real. Man, she doesn't like me. She does not like me. Man, she doesn't like me. You're just getting nervous and stuff. But then really, she might do like you. But things may not be the way you think it is. That's my point. So once the brain has encountered a threat, whether actual or perceived, it releases a surge of chemicals like, like cortisol and nor norepinephrine. These chemicals give us a natural boost in reflex time, perception, and speed. They cause our hearts to pump faster in order to get more blood and oxygen circulating through our bodies. We essentially go into survival mode. So imagine being in survival mode day in and day out. And we don't want that. Okay. Okay, so this survival response is helpful and necessary when we encounter a real threat, but in excess can cause long-term damage to our bodies. The effects of chronic stress have been linked to a weakened immune system, weight gain, and heart disease, among other issues. All right. When new research is finding a possible correlation between prolonged stress and anxiety and the structural degeneration of the hippocampus and, and impaired functioning of the pre, uh, prefrontal cortex, this means that the wear and tear caused by, to the brain by chronic stress or anxiety can be tied to an increased risk of depression and dementia. Dementia. And out of the laws of health, I believe that this is, one, is, is, is top of the list, is most important. For, and so for more information about how you can trust God more, if you want to have a relationship with Jesus and want to know how to trust God more, just come to myself, my wife, and we'll put you in the right direction. Next is open air. Open what? Open air. All right? Brain cells are extremely sensitive to oxygen deprivation and can begin to die within five minutes after oxygen supply has been cut off. When hypoxia lasts for longer than longer periods of time, it can cause coma, seizures, even brain death. Fresh air is rich in oxygen, which increases the level of oxygen circulating in the blood. This also means more oxygen supply to the brain. Amen. Okay. Even if you don't smoke, do we anyone smoke here? It's okay. Listen to this. Even if you don't smoke, or if you do, but if you don't smoke, a new study shows secondhand smoke affects your brain more, much as it does a smoker's. It is one reason to steer clear of secondhand smoke in cars and other enclosed spaces. The researchers discovered the addictive chemical nicotine Nicotine, found in all tobacco products, both in the blood and attached to monocles in the brain after exposure to secondhand smoke, this nicotine binding was similar to the smokers and non-smokers. These results show that even limited secondhand smoke exposure delivers enough nicotine to the brain to alter its function, says Dr. Nora, director of NIH 
and on drug abuse. Okay? So let's have some fresh air. Fresh air. Open up those windows. And sometimes my wife loves to open the window, even when it's cold outside. And I'm, I'm from Virginia, it gets cold. So, man, you can close it a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right, so next is daily exercise. A daily exercise. Being physically fit decreases your risk of memory loss. Nice. Advises Algarol, who suggests incorporating walking, daily chores, and other activities in your daily life. The centers, the CDC notes that physical activity can help improve memory, reduce anxiety and depression, and reduce the risk of dementia. But you don't have to be a fitness guru to reap the benefits. And so I think about, even again, my grandpa, he loves riding his bike. He loved to ride around the lake, and that's a big lake. While grandma walked around the lake, he would just leave and, and ride the bike around. And uh, he kept his exercise going like that, all right? Um, just get up, if you can't do that, just get up and move. Just do what you can, move your arms, move your legs, move your neck, but just keep, there's action, there's life in action. Exercise oxygenates the brain and causes it to last longer. All right, moving right along. Next one is sunshine. Sunshine. All right, so we're doing God's plan. Right now we're G-O-D-S. We're almost there. All right. A sunny day can make you feel happy, but it may also help retain some of your cognitive powers. New research suggests that vitamin D, often obtained through the sun exposure, is good for our what? Our brains. Researchers say the findings provide more evidence the lack of sunlight and reduced serotonin levels are important in the development of seasonal affective uh, disorder, or known as SAD. Sunlight decreases Trigger sunlight and darkness trigger the release of hormones in the brain. Exposure to sunlight increases the brain's release of the hormone called serotonin. Serotonin is associated with boosting mood and helping a person feel calm and focused. At night, darker lighting triggers the brain to make another hormone called melatonin. This hormone is responsible for helping you sleep. This leads me to our next eight laws of health, which is Proper rest. Okay. Thank you. That was this. All right, so burning, who likes to stay up at night? Who's a night owl? Night owl, okay, here's this for you. This is for you, it's for me too. For me too. Okay, burning the all-night fuel is not doing your body, your brain, any favors. Not sleeping enough can increase your risk of dementia, warns this doctor here, a board-certified neurologist and neuroscientist. You can change this by coming up with a set sleeping schedule, uh, at least six to seven hours, and sticking to it. All right. Our next one, we're going right along. There's lots of water. Okay. Is, it, is this legible? Can you read this? All right, good. All right, lots of water. Who likes, who likes drinking water? Who doesn't like drinking water? Okay, all right, just be honest, it's good. Be honest. 
I don't like drinking water either, but I drink it because I, I know I have to. My wife will tell you that I need to drink more, but um, sometimes I forget. But we need to drink water. We need to do, keep up our uh, water intake. Let me give you the single most effective prescription for well-being, improved health, disease prevention, potentially reversing reversible stages of degeneration diseases, and finally the best pain medica- medicine in the world. It needs no doctor's prescription. It is freely available. It costs nothing. Does that sound good? It costs nothing? It has no dangerous side effects. It is the medication your body cries for when it's stressed. It is good old, plain, natural water. What kind of water, water is it? Before natural, what did it say? Please keep that in mind, plain, <laughs> natural water. Ready for the cash for the industrial system of the body, all right? We need not just natural water, but plain natural water. We're gonna talk about that. All right. There, there are plenty of reasons to drink enough water each day, including regulating your body's temperature, providing infec- preventing infections, keeping your organs functioning, and elevating your mood. You can, it can also reduce your risk of heart failure reduce your risk of heart failure. And since about 75% of the brain is made up of water, dehydration, even in the small amounts, can have a negative effect on the brain, on the brain functions. The body is composed mostly of water, and maintaining optimum hydration is essential for physical and cognitive performance. Water is essential, is an essential uh, nutrition because we require water in amounts that exceed our body's ability to produce it. Proper hydration helps you think clearly, increase productivity, reduces stress, and regulates appetite. Recommendations for water intake depend on a variety of factors, such as your environment, your activity level. As as a general rule, drink at least one half of your body weight in ounces of water or naturally uh, non-caloric beverages daily. So if you weigh 180 pounds, then aim for at least 90 ounces of water a day. Okay. Now what is the difference between water and fluids? What's the difference between water and fluids? Anyone? There's water and then there's fluids, or is there a difference? Someone said water is what? Okay, water is clean, it's pure, no additives. Anyone else? Okay, yeah. That's good, that's good. That's the difference. That's the difference. We're going to talk about that. Let's see. Okay. Naturally, we wonder why we should drink water and not the pleasing and taste-enhancing beverages that are now the staples of our modern society. After all, they are made from water and do the job of quenching our thirst, or at least we feel that. We feel they do. I remember having um, ginger ale, ginger brew, cold, nice and cold, and I, just, and I feel refreshed, the bubbly and stuff. Say, man, I feel refreshed. Was I refreshed? <laughs> in, in fact, much of the problem of the bad health is founded on this misconception. As far as the chemistry of the body is concerned, water and fluids are two different what? Things. As far as the chemistry of the body is concerned, water and fluid are two different what? As it happens, popular manufactured beverages contain some chemicals that alter the body's chemistry at its central nervous system control center. Even milk is not the same as water. Or is it? Okay, good. Milk is a food and must be treated as a food. The body needs water. Nothing substitutes for water. Coffee. Soda, what does that say? alcohol, or even milk, juices, even orange juice. Not the same as water. It's not the same, won't do the same thing. 
On a side note, alcohol and beverages, alcohol, drinking alcohol, uh, causes dehydration, causing the, the kidneys to flush out water. But we're going to get to that. All right, next is something known as always temperate. Always what? Okay. All right. Okay, we've got the A here. Always... Always temperate. Now, what does temperance mean? What does that mean? When I say be temperate, when the Bible says be temperate in all things, what does temperate mean? Moderation? Not taking excess. Not, what was not taking excess? Keep, that, keep these words in mind. They're very important. Moderation, excess. Anyone else want to add to that? Abstaining from what? That is harmful. Okay, good. Amen. So we got moderation, excess, abstaining th uh, from things that are harmful to the body. <clears throat> Man, we, we, you've been studying. All right, so let's go, let's go on here. So always temper. So we got godly trust, open air, daily exercise, sunshine, proper rest, lots of water, always temperate. We saw that temperate is, someone says moderate, moderation, uh, Excess and also abstaining from things that are harmful to the body. Let's see, let's continue. Okay, sorry. What is meaning of temperance? We talked about it. Obtaining from that which is harmful. And number two, good job, moderation in all that is good. No, being, being temperate is, is very easy to save from bad, save from bad stuff. So I want to focus on the moderation. Because there's some things that we do, even if it's good, we go in excess over. Even, even, even when God says, yes, it's okay to do, we still go in excess. And we're going to talk about a few things. <laughs> so again, the Bible says, in every, in every man that strives for the mastery, are we striving for the mastery? Are we striving to do the right thing? Are we striving to make it? Every day. So we're trying to do the right thing every day and we're striving for that. It says, be temperate in all things, in everything, even the things that are mostly that are good, everything. So what's needed in doing that? How do we do that? We need self-discipline, self-control, self-denial, and abstinence. All right? <clears throat> Now, what is this here? Oftentimes, when I walk in nature and I, I stumble upon these things, especially when I was younger, when I was younger, I was always went into the into the um, into the park, not, not into the park, into the trees, and found streams and creeks, and found like frogs and tadpoles and throw rocks and just in the water and try to jump over the water and I would oftentimes trip into the water. But that's just part of growing up, and I would find a spider web. And I, I never wanted to disturb it because it was just, it always looked so beautiful. And so I tried to find the best, I looked up spiderweb. This could be the best one I found. But it looks great, right? This is a normal spiderweb. And I want to show you something. This one is a spiderweb. This one, while the spider was creating the web, there was a test. There was a test with the spider web, and they, they, they um, infused it with uh, marijuana smoke as the spider was doing it. And as the spider was doing it, this is what his result was. Right? And that's just, that's just, this is just a depiction of what happens in the mind of a human. Right? Let's continue on. This one is a spider infused with speed, a drug called speed. This right here. Is that beautiful? No. This one is sleeping pills. And somehow they infused the air with the spider, and this is what came out of it. <laughs> now this one here I'm going to talk about a little bit right here. We, talked about, we touched on it a few days ago, but I want to talk about this. Oh, okay. Okay, good, it's covered. This is another one. 
What do you think this one is? Caffe- Someone said caffeine? <laughs> All right. It's caffeine. It's caffeine. This is the mind on caffeine right here. We're going to talk about a little bit of caffeine here. All right. So caffeine further, also, caffeine further dehydrates the body. It dehydrates the body. It would, meaning you urinate more than the volume of water contained in the beverage. It blocks the production of melatonin in the brain. Now, what, we found out that we need melatonin for what? Sleep. So when you drink caffeine, the more you do, the more, the more harder, the harder it is to fall asleep. This is why you lack much sleep drinking coffee. All right, so some of the effects of caffeine are as follows. Rapid heart, rapid heart beating, uh, elevates the blood pressure by three to five mmHg milliliters uh, of mercury. Oh, you can't see it, okay. Caffeine is a drug that stimulates, increases the activity of your brain and nervous system, restlessness and excitability, anxious and difficulty sleeping, anxiety and irritability. Okay. This is something that we, we should steer. So caffeine is something that we need to steer away from. When I say steering, I, I think of driving. We're all, we don't like potholes. No car likes potholes. And we don't like driving and feeling the bump in the potholes. And so if we see a pothole, we, we steer out of the way. See, we steer out of the way. Some streets are worse, but we need to steer out of the way of potholes. And as we're living in this life today, as we're on a journey on this road in our life, we need to steer away from the things that are bad. We need to abstain from the things that are bad and also be moderate in the things that are good. And so another topic, I'm going to bring another topic out about something that some of us may go through. And next slide, what is coming? But caffeine is a stimulant. Because it's a stimulant, it, it irritates the nerves. And with constant irritation comes inflammation. And I've seen people at work, they love coffee. The first thing they do is, hey, can I make some coffee? I come in at 5 o'clock in the morning in the shift, and they're like, hey, can I make, can I make a cup of coffee? I'm like, why? But they, want, they think they need the coffee to do what they need to do. They drink coffee, drink coffee in their hand, drink, drink, drink. And I can realize, see that they're very like, choo, choo, choo. they don't slow down. They want to, they want to slow down, but they can't. They, just, they can't stop slowing down. They can't stop going fast. Okay. All right, so I'm going to talk about zinc. We're still talking about temperance. Zinc plays an important role in our neurophysiology. Excessively released causes neurotoxic damage to the postsynaptic neuron. I'll show you this. Pre and post synaptic neuron, synaptic neuron, synaptic neuron. This is the pre and the post, and so this this uh, is sending an, a signal and it jumps in, it jumps the synapse into the next one here. All right, but when this is damaged, it's not good. This is. And I'll show you. I'll talk to you about why. All right, excessively release causes neuron damage to post synaptic neurons. So the signal is being sent out, but it can't be received, and it just bounces out. Here we find that zinc deficiency includes degeneration and cognitive decline disorders, such as increased neural, uh, neuronal death and decreased learning and memory. We need zinc. A lack of zinc can lead to foggy thinking and memory problems. 
So again, the signal is going out, but it's not being received. And so in regards to temperance, and keep that in mind, the signal is going out, but it's not being received. Please keep that in mind. What a time? Okay. All right. Let's just continue. Let's go. Oh, we're almost, okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. It was okay, we're almost there. All right. So, sig- so the signal is going out, but it's not being received. In regards to temperance, I want to bring on a real topic many, are dealing, many of us are dealing with, maybe even in this room or online watching. And that is, I want to br- talk about in a few moments, just that um, the male sexual organ health, being intimate with your spouse. Now, I want you to show you, I want to show you something what is, temperate, what is temperance again? Is obtaining from that which is bad, but also doing what's good in moderation. And we know from the Bible that, yes, it's okay, it's good, but moderation. So, we see being one with your spouse is a wonderful gift from the Lord, yet we have to be temperate even with that. The temptation, even for self-abuse, is high, and all men, because a pornography is so accessible with a click of a button, it's real. And if people are doing this multiple times a day, it can cause serious problems cognitively. They put out more than what they're getting in. Okay. So with every release, a human male loses about one milligram of zinc. So you can see why this mineral needs regular replenishment if you want to maintain your sexual and reproductive organ health. The CDC, the, the, um, the recommended dietary allowance for adults for males is 11 milligrams a day, while it's eight for women. And so what we see here, you may not be able to, you may not be able to form, perform or you may not be able to reach the climax because you have the feeling the receptors are going in, but it's not being, it's not being received. And it's, it's, it's all, it goes deeper than that. So if anyone is struggling with this, please speak to someone. You can talk to someone to help you or just fall on your knees and cry, Lord, help me to, to be delivered because it's a serious thing. For our truth. Our last one, our last one. So we have G-O-D-S-T-P-L-A. The last one is what? What is it? Is it a J? N. Okay. What's, what, what do you think it might be? That's right. Okay. All right, so we have G-O-D-S-T-P is God's plan. Eight laws of health. All right, it's wrapping up. What is this? All right, so nutrition, I want to bring out the point. The food, it will let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food, right? Food isn't just a fuel for your body. Food isn't just fuel for your body. It's also fuel for your brain. And the good news is that there are is so many brain-healthy foods that are delicious. I point out, like... Blueberries and other deeply colored berries deliver a group of plant compounds with anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. Some of the antioxidants in blueberries have been found to accumulate in the brain and help improve communication between brain cells. We'll continue past this. I wanted to show you the last part there. It says omega-3 fatty acids, some some foods to get to help your brain flaxseed, chia seeds, walnuts, soybeans, seaweed, Brussels sprouts, spinach, cauliflower, mangoes. Ooh, I saw that. I was like, yes. Avocados, kidney beans, and cashews. I love cashews. And so as I close here, this is some practical things we can do to improve our memory, improve our brain health. I remember Grandpa, he was, when I was with him, he, there's a show he watched every day. The show he watched every day, and that was The Price is Right. And he, he would always, da 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 boom, he was just quick. He was like trying to, pew, pew. You know, even when, I didn't tell him this, but one day I tried to like apply to get him on the show. 
They, they didn't call him back, but I was, I'm still trying. But he would, he, would, he would be watching that, but his mind was going. He, would, he would knew the things, he knew what to do, he knew that he was answering right away, and, I, and that, I just, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. And so cognitive, fit, cognitive fitness, we can all do this. It's like exercise, but with your brain. And guess what? You're using your brain right now just by reading this. Plus, practicing cognitive fitness is easier than physical exercise because you can do it sitting down. So keep your mind active is one of the most impactful ways to delay the onset of cognitive decline. Activity that exercises the brain may build brain reserves that help to uh, compensate for the damage caused by Alzheimer's or other diseases. Okay, next. And so some things we can do practically is um, to shock the brain, so to speak, is mix it up a little bit with new, with new and different things, such as you know, tying your tie in the dark, uh, eating with the opposite hand or writing with the opposite hand. Um, doing this will recruit different parts of the brain to do these simple activities. All right? You know, I love this mint culture. And so one, some, a herb or a, mint, a herb that we can use to help with memory is called ginkgo. Uh, and we'll talk about more so after, when we do the demonstration, my wife will talk more about that ginkgo. All right? So now as we move to our separate, our next one, we'll go to our natural remedies now. All right? But as we close this half, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you may help us to come up higher. I pray, Lord, that we can apply these principles in our life practically. Give us strength where we are weak. Your biddings are our enablings. Because you told us to do these things, you will give us all we need to do it. We claim your promises in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you Gladstone for such information. It was very informative. And at this time, I'm gonna go into the second phase of this evening's presentation. And uh, one thing I want you all to remember is this. Natural remedies does not work without the, uh, the theory that he gave. Right? He gave us the plans that we must follow. Right? So what I'm gonna be what I'm gonna do here this evening is gonna be accompanying, you know, it's an accompany company it's gonna accompany what my husband just says. Right? And so don't think that I can give you a drink and your brain is just gonna pop working up. It doesn't work like that, right? And all things gonna work together for you to get back your brain health, okay? So this evening, I wanna address one thing. Somebody asked me last night about, they says that they want to change their baby off of cow's milk. Is that person here this evening? Okay, so I did a few experiments for you, and um, I'm gonna show you how to do it, and then I'm gonna allow each person to try it and see if that's something you can work with, all right? So we have a few demonstrations this evening. So the first one, the first one I wanna do is, um, I'm gonna go with the brain one first, seeing that, you know, Gladstone just finished with that one. So, so we're gonna look at the brain booster. Is anybody excited to try this one? All right. Let me ask you something. Did anybody had any runs last night? No? You didn't get enough to make a run, right? <laughs> All right, so um, we see the ingredient. We're gonna be using walnuts. We know that walnuts is one of those good nuts for the brain, right? And uh, it's something called maca, maca root. 
And as Gladstone says, the last part of his presentation was talking about, you know, um, the excess that, you know, sometimes wife and husbands can go into excess and that deplete the amount of zinc out of your brain. And I praise God for Maka Ruth because when we go in excess, God in mercy gave us some Maka Ruth, right? Going to be using some coconut milk or cream. Water, vanilla, and a little bit of honey. All right, so let me show you how to make this drink. So, <clears throat> you're going to need a blender, right? We have some fresh walnuts. All right, so you're gonna help me. What's the measurement for the walnuts? So we want one half of a cup. And we're gonna pour that in, right? What else? Three tablespoons of what? Okay, so you have different types. You might find the red one, you might find the black one, and this one is just the, um, it looks like black seed, what, brown, right? But you can try any one of them. I've ne never used the red or the black one, but I've always used this one because it tastes like, you know, um, it tastes like a tea, a nice, cool Jamaican, Arlex, <laughs> right? So I'm gonna put um, th three tablespoon. Okay. What else? Coconut milk. We're going to put one fourth. One fourth cups of coconut is either the milk or the cream. Okay, what else? Two and a half cups of Okay. All right, and now we're going to blend it for about one, two minutes. And in the meantime, I'm blending it. I'm going to ask somebody to help me to pour it. Um, this is the same thing I made it earlier. Pour it in these cups and pass it around. Can somebody help me, please? going to blend it for about two minutes.
brain booster and I want you to be honest it's not a nasty tasting herb you know not all of them is nasty <laughs> Pick up your hands if you want to try it. If you want to try it, stick up your hands. All right. Come on, come on and get it. Come. Let's move faster, a little faster. Take it and go back to your seat. Take it and go back to your seat quickly. And this will, I mean, it's, you're going to find that it's going to give you a lot of energy in the morning. And one of the things that I've realized with um, herbs that are for the brain, it will give you a quick boost. But then, later in the day, it will start slowing you down so you can get your rest. Okay, we have more. All right. So, has everyone been served? Can we get one? You want one? something that you all can do do you think that this is something you all can do okay good all right so you're gonna see that um, if you add this to what Gladstone has just presented the laws of health you're gonna find that it's gonna help to boost your brain All right. In the meantime, she's doing that. Another thing we can do for the brain is maca, M A C M A C A, maca roots. All right. So, in a bottle, in a in a bottle, this is this is a this is a tea for the brain. In a bottle, we have some fr fresh rosemary. So I'm gonna put. I'm just gonna estimate it now, right? I'm gonna put like a three tablespoon of rosemary and equal amount of sage. And both of these herbs are very good to boost your memory. And so I'm gonna pour. The hot water, can you help me with that, baby? He's going to fill it up with 32 ounces. And you can do this twice a day, right? This tea you can do twice a day. It's going to help to boost your memory. And uh, there's something else we can do. We have some rosemary oil essential oils and we also have some sage and uh, you want to you yeah, pour it in so if you know you're gonna ha if you know you're gonna start doing the tea tomorrow you can always steep it in the morning right and uh, you 
the longer you sip it, the more, more strength you're going to get out of it, right? And so I'm going to just put this, and uh, for the next 30 to 45 minutes, this can be ready to drink, right? And um, the next thing we can do is to get a little container and... Uh, I got some olive oil. And I remember we have a very good friend. He's like a father to me. And he had brain death for seven days. No activities at all in his brain. And we thought that he was going to die. But, you know, God decided to wake him after seven days. God decided to wake him up after seven days, and uh, after he woke up, he could not remember anything, nothing. And so we utilize the laws of health, and what else you think? We use a sage, they use the rosemary, and they use the macaroos, and a few other things. And today, he is a big minister doing God's work. Isn't God good? Another thing that you can do to boost your memory is scripture memorization. I had a client and she got, she got a stroke at about 35. And she was losing her memory and she came into the program for 18 days, and she did tremendously well, right? And, but the problem is always going home. She went home, she did not have the help, and she went straight back. Now she is 45 and she's pretty much, she doesn't have no memory left. And so, you know, it is all good to do a program. It's all, do, it's all good to do a detox, but if you're not gonna follow up, it's like a waste of time, right? You're not gonna see the full benefit if you don't follow up. So I'm gonna be doing the, it, it's a, um, it's a brain, what, what do we call it again? Not brain booster. Anyways, it's like, it's, it's like an oil, you can make a salve out of it, but it's like an oil that you can rub into the base of your neck in the night and it will help to also enhance your, um, memory. So I'm going to be using a carrier oil. You can use sweet almond. You can use um, olive oil. You can use castor oil, right? And uh, I'm just using about an ounce. And I'm going to put 10 drops of rosemary oil, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? And then I'm going to do the same for the sage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I want to tell you a little secret about rosemary. And I know that everybody's body works different. But rosemary can put you to sleep. So if you, I can only tell you to try it. But you're going to have to experiment with it for yourself because I don't know if it's going to put you to sleep, yes or no, especially the tea. And one t I remember one day I was at work and I decided that, you know, this lady has a lot of rosemary in the back of the yard. And I was like, you know, I need some tea. And I went out and I got some rosemary tea. You know what happened next? I was sleeping pretty much all day. Right? And so you can just experiment with it for yourself. But this oil, you can put a couple, couple drops of peppermint as well, right? And before you go to bed, you're just going to take a little bit and you're going to massage it in the, in the base of your neck, right? And it will help. But you have to be consistent. Not herbal, herbal, herbal remedies does not work overnight. You must be consistent. Yes, Aunt Marlene? 
about one ounce. Yeah. And uh, who wanna who wanna take this home this evening? Anybody wants this? <laughs> the first person to come can get it. Okay, I'll make one for somebody else. I'll make another one. All right, so those are some of the things that we can do to boost our brain. All right, um, the milk. Right, you can, use, you can use either sweet almond oil, you can use castor oil, or you can use olive oil. Yeah, you just need something to carry it. And you, as I said, you can put a little bit of peppermint oil in it or ginger oil. It will even push it in more, quicker. All right. The next thing we're going to look at is the milk. This one is cashew. Anybody want to try the cashew milk? I'm going to show you how our, I'm going to show you how to make it quickly. Anybody want to try the cashew milk? If you want to try it, put up your hand. Mommy, come up. Mommy? M mother? What's her name? Come. All right, if you're trying, go ahead and try the milk, especially if you have small children and you're trying to get them off of cold's milk. Anybody else want to try? Come on, it's, it's good, it's good. If you want to make a lifestyle change, come on up. These are alternative to animal products. At least you know what you're putting in your own milk. It doesn't have any preservative. It's much fresher, right? You know, you know all the ingredients you're putting in. Okay, give her some more. And you just have to be consistent with her. All right. And we have somebody else want to try this one? This one is sunflower seed milk. Do you want to try this one? If you want to try the sunflower seed milk, it's all in, you know, it's, it's, it's the same family. You can come, on, come and try the sunflower seed milk. Unless you just like to go to Walmart or one of these places to buy milk, but these are milk you can make by yourself. I'm this is, uh, Mm -hmm. 
Anybody else want to try? All right, for those, for those who have tried the milk, which one do you think is the better one? Most people like the cashew. Anybody else? Which of the milk do you like? All right, so I'm just going to show you to make one of these milk, the cashew milk, seeing that most people like the cashew. All right, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay, we have a choice. Um, you, I'm going to let you choose the milk or the hydrotherapy. Which one? Milk. Okay, let's finish off the milk. All right, so for the milk... Do you have the recipe up there? Okay, for, so for the milk, we're going to do one cup of, half cup of cashew. I'm just going to make a very small amount. And then we're going to do one-fourth cup of coconut milk. Huh? I do. I do. I'll get it to you. Um, oh, I forget my salt. But it, it does take a pinch, just a pinch of salt. And uh, a little bit of vanilla. about a teaspoon and we're going to use just a little piece of orange peel just a little piece right and then We're going to use some water. I'm going to use about a cup and a half of water. And then I'm going to blend with, no, a little bit of honey. I'm going to put about probably a tablespoon. I'll get the recipe. I have the recipe right written down somewhere there. And then we're going to blend it. You know that coconut milk is one of the closest milk to breast, um, to breast milk. So if you, if you can't produce enough breast milk, you can drink a lot of coconut water and it will also help to stimulate it. But if you still can't, then you can try coconut milk, especially the young coconut. Okay, about a week, yeah.
Because when we make it, it serves a week, like a week, if you put it in the fridge. All right, and so I'm just going to go ahead and strain it out. Okay, let me just... All my containers are finished. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and strain it. And if you, if, you, if you blend it long enough, you're going to find that you don't really have a lot of pulp, a lot of pulp to come out. You see? You don't really have a lot. So, and this would be your milk. Doesn't it look delicious? Yes. Who want to taste some? All right, come and get it. Oh, you want to take it? You like it? All right, so okay, here's some other one. Okay, so did you enjoy those presentation tonight? Okay, so I'm hoping by God's grace that we can continue to learn more about herbs and fruits and vegetables and things that are healthier so that we can have better health. You can give, give her the rest. Give the mommy the rest so she can take it for the baby. Mm -hmm. Give mommy the rest so probably she can take it for the baby. Yeah. Oh, um. Um, just give me a little bit more. Come, 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 try. Okay. All right. So that is bring us to the end of our presentation for this evening. Any questions? See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. I, I promise. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Great. Anybody want to have some rosemary tea? Anybody want to take some of this home? Okay. I'm going to get some cups and give. Just let us pray and finish off, and then I'll get this to you guys. All right. It is for the brain. It helps to enhance the memory. It's rosemary and sage. The tea, the recipe is up here. All right? All right, let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you again for these sessions. And I pray that each person will take this information, not only for themselves, but there is somebody out there that they can share it with. I thank you so much for being with us and for making the, the necessary provisions for us to be able to be here to share these things with your people. We ask that you will take us home all safe this evening and that we'll come again and bring somebody when we will look at diabetes and how we can better take care of diabetes. In Jesus' name, amen.